Welcome to Invercargill in New Zealand's Deep South, home to Cycling Southland and the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. Now in its 63rd year, the SBS Bank Tour is one of the country's longest running sporting events and the most prestigious title in New Zealand cycling. The list of past winners is a who's who of New Zealand road racing and it remains the toughest test of the Kiwi calendar. 108 riders, 18 teams, 7 days, 860 kilometres and only one winner. If there's one thing the SBS Bank Tour of Southland is famous for, it's the crosswinds. And they return for Friday's stage to Gore for what would prove to be the defining stage of this year's event. The yellow jersey was always going to be under pressure over the 151 kilometres and so it proved. An early break featuring Harcourt's sprint ace leader Tom Sexton riding for Business South saw the young Southlander all but guaranteed the green jersey. But the major move of the day came from the placemakers through Winton as they timed their break to perfection and blew the tour apart. Try as they might, Eda Freire's Kia Motors Ascot Park Hotel team couldn't bridge the gap and Vink and the break charged into the distance. Nick White claimed the stage, but Vink was the real winner of the day and will take a lead of over two minutes into the final day. Michael Vink, the placemakers. Oh, it was a pretty hard stage, to be fair. We really wanted to isolate Kia, which worked out perfect, and then we knew that placemakers were going to give it something, and if they could get across or not, that's a different story. And then uh, Heaney managed to come across with them, which was perfect, and then uh, we just gave it ham until the finish to get as much time on yellow jersey, which meant uh, Heaney came into second and I got into third, which was perfect, and Vink's pretty more or less sewing up the yellow jersey, so chapeau to him. If anything yesterday was just a confirmation that I think we're the strongest team in the race, you know, and that confidence is, is often the, 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 big, the big factor. So to know we have a team that can do what we did yesterday coming into this stage is, is pretty cool. It was definitely a stage that uh, yeah, changed everything really. It was um, placemakers rode very well. Um, they had a plan, we had a plan, and it, it all sort of worked out in the end. And yeah, it definitely changed things up, which was pretty cool. Two, one, go. Time trial today, it's kind of, you just got to go full gas and hope for the best. Um, I think we're, we're in a pretty strong position, um, so we just got to, we just got to go out there and give it everything and then see how to, uh, this afternoon ends up. Uh, yeah, I don't think the weather's going to play a big factor today. It's, uh, it's not very windy. Um, it's raining obviously, but it's wet for everyone. So certainly I think to start upright and not take any risks. Um, it's nice for me to have two minutes up my sleeve so I can uh, be uh, a bit Go a bit gingerly through the corners, which is, I think, what I'll do today. So the penultimate stage here in Central Southland Winton with a 13k time trial. This year today, Doug will see some riders trying to challenge to remain in that top 10 for the general classification. It's very much all on. The, the, the time trial is an ability, or well, gives you the ability to leapfrog your way up the GC, as you're saying, but it also gives the other riders behind you a chance to do, to do that. So here we are out on the course, Dylan Kennett riding a reasonably big gear here. He's well over this, but gosh, that guy's got a smooth technique, hasn't he? Yes, Kennett comes into this tour with some fine form after winning one of the tours in Asia. And of course, he's a New Zealand representative on the track. So this kind of event will be the one that will suit this man. Yeah, he's just built for time trialling. You can see there, not a square inch of body fat on this guy. He's well, well uh, ripped out. Obviously, having had a big week, his form's come on as the tour's gone on too. And uh, here we are with one of the power net riders. It's Van Noppen. Uh, he's in the under-23 section coming around the corner. They'll be pretty ginger around the corners. There's a bit of water out there, but he's got a different technique altogether. Yes, of course, he's one of the men trying to challenge for this uh, Henderson Construction under-23 jersey. Very tight coming into this particular stage. It was about a minute covering the top three, so these guys can't hold back in this time trial. They're going to have to put everything right through in the time trial and, of course, into Gala Street. Isn't it incredible how a stage race over so many days can boil down to a 13 kilometre journey? And here this is the Diverston rider from Creation Signs, Rico. They've had a huge week, these guys. They've been on the charge. They really have been in all the moves, all the splits. It's a credit to James Canny and the management. They come here every year and, and really put a big effort in. And this man is really trying his hardest. Yes, Case, the winner of the Quarter Stewart Series here in the South Island of New Zealand over the last uh, few weeks. 
weeks. So he comes in with some very good form, sitting second overall in the under 23. As we look to Shrew as, of course, the man third on general classification, 333 down. So again, he has to go out there. He can't hold back. They've got to get it absolutely everything. He is in top gear here, riding a massive gear, well over it though, but the strength of these riders is something we all underestimate now, a great aerial shot of Hamish Schroes is very, very stable on the bike, but they are so strong, these athletes now, gone are the days where you're in a smaller gear and over it's spinning, they push monster gears, they push them at a high cadence and they go super quick. And here is young Thompson, of course, after a fantastic effort yesterday in Tagore, has moved himself right up to the top of the leaders board in the under 23. So he knows the sort of challenges that he's got there. He'll be aware of some of the time splits out on the road and he has to give it absolute death if he wants to hold on to that pink jersey. There's a theme emerging, Julian, these under 23 guys, these are the future of the New Zealand cycling scene. They've all come, or a lot of them have come off the track base. It's so exciting to see such a, a great new crop of young guys all coming through and pushing on we've got a lot of good future and a lot of good SBS Bank tours to come yet so it's Alex Heaney in the starting blocks Alex rolls Heaney off the way. ramp now I've been very impressed with Alex of course he's been here a number of years for the tour is always well performed he's been in the yellow jersey before as we've said earlier in this week but he'll be a man here that'll put the power down throughout this 13k it's a fairly short and sharp one but we know you can lose a significant amount of time Doug in the Stein trial yeah desperation really they really really do quick go quickly around here and you can see the kind of gears these guys have been riding they're rolling along in excess of 50 kilometers an hour in parts on this course and they are really desperate not to obviously lose any places on GC but in some respects this is really their last genuine individual chance to leapfrog up that ladder. And I've been talking to a number of the riders lower down in the general classification they know they have to average a big speed if they want to make the time cut here as we see the man who has won the stage numerous times, the man in the yellow jersey here today for placemakers Michael Vink. He is powering his way through it to here. He knows he's got a decent gap overall in the general classification but he'll still put out a good one here and it'll be one of the men to look for in the overall for this time trial so Vink rolls across the line the clocks are stopped and it is Michael Vink who continues to be in the yellow jersey by 2 minutes and 30 seconds from Alex Heaney after finishing 3rd in the stage while Shrewis continues to keep himself well placed in 3rd overall yeah, there's a big battle going on for the under-23 jersey at the moment. So there's only a minute between, or less than a minute between Ruben and I going to the last stage. And the win is getting up, so we'll definitely keep trying for the jersey. I haven't had to use much energy all week. Like I said, the boys have been great. Um, I've just been out sitting and saving my berries where I can. And um, yeah, no, I'm excited to finish it off in the Chicago. Showing how strong we are still in the time trial today. Um, We've probably got the freshest legs somehow still, so um, yeah, we're looking forward to it. And uh, to be honest, it's been nice to do the double today, so we'll see how we go. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not over until it's over. We've got to sort of just stay upright and stay safe and not take any risks. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's all looking good so far, but certainly the tour is not one yet. Folks, would you put your hands together for the Bruce Ambassador Award winner, Travis Kane of Business South. So here we go with seven days of racing under their belts, nearly 900 kilometres for these riders here. It's been a huge week in this SBS Bank Tour of Southland. A mixture of weather, but on the whole, Doug, it's been pretty good for them. Look, I think you'd have to rate this year's SBS Bank Tour as one of the epic ones. The, uh, the, the amount of different leaders we've had, the combativeness of all of the riders and the willingness for them to race. Uh, Michael Vink's ride uh, it has been one of the best ones, and we'll talk about this for a while yet, I'd say. So here we go as the first three riders decide to make their move of the day on this final stage. Everyone wants to win it. This is youth and experience as we see Lachlan Robertson, the man on the front, one of the hub riders from down here in Southland, along with Hausler in the green jersey for support clean sport from the United States of America. Yeah, this is, like you said, this is the last chance for a lot of these riders to stake a claim for stage victory. And it, believe it or not, there is simply no procession in the last stage of the SBS Bank Tour. It is game on right to that finish line in Gala Street. You can see this group is going to get caught. It's great to see these young guys having a crack in the last stage. But uh, it has changed hands the lead. I can't see it happening today. Michael Vink's lead and his team are just so strong. But hey, it's stage racing, Julian. Anything can happen. Oh, absolutely. And there's still a 
few jerseys up for grabs. That under 23 continues to be a tight battle, as does the silver jersey in the stage. And the wind has picked up, and these riders have certainly taken note of it, particularly the placemakers team. Once again, we see them towards the front with one of the vet for farm riders from Switzerland, Powernet, obviously, up in the front there. And you can see them well stretched out, a fair indication that the speed is on. Yeah, as soon as the wind increases, the theme this week has been uh, placemakers to the front, power net to the front, Kia Motors, Ascot Park to the front. And a lot of that, Julian, is in, in simply around safety. It's a lot safer when you're in that front group and the guys rolling around all know each other and there's a bit of security in there. It is very hard as a rider further back in the GC to break into this front selection. And you can see them riding along here at a very, very high speed. Yes, these guys are in excess of 65k an hour. You can see the wind battling across the road, hence why they're on the right-hand side. They're in the echelon at the front, but if you're further back in this peloton, this is what happens to you here. And here's a great example of that echelon, and there's a reason why you see the tour leader right on the front in the centre of the road, making life difficult for those riders if you're not in the top eight at the front. And here it is, another great shot. These guys are doing some great camera work this week. It has been great and we often don't see the back of the group when the, the placemaker squad are on the front but it is just carnage further back. There's guys desperate to try and grab wheels, desperate to try and get some shelter and you really, really have to be in that front group or in that top 15 to get anywhere near the, 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 the kind of protection from this wind. And you see here one of the uh, creation signs riders, it is just hell further back. Yes, you wouldn't pick that this is the final stage of a tour because often it's just a procession to town. But today, as it always is in the SBS Bank Tour of Southland, these riders race it hard all the way to the line. We started with 95 starters out of Winton. We've got about 20 remaining in here. And to the way the sort of speeds that are going on here, I would suggest we may lose a few more yet. Yeah, that was Josh Haggerty putting in a huge turn for his team uh, leader there, Michael Vink. Josh has had a great race this year. There's the sprint ace at the back, uh, Tom Six, and he'll be eyeing up and hoping his sprint legs are going to uh, help him in the finish. But the boys in the placemakers team, we've talked about them all week, but what a sterling effort. They've come on, they're still caning them at the front of the race here right in the last stage, and that has been a superb team performance. Freire there of Mexico, of course the man that was in the yellow jersey for a few days and a superb climber but unfortunately for him losing it yesterday across to Gore he's made the break here he was seventh uh, going into the time trial or the result of the time trial so now he's trying to move himself up even further because this field is absolutely disintegrated there is huge gaps back to the rest of the field and these sorts of speeds and this sort of win and these conditions here I don't see the bunches catching. Yeah, no, once that split's occurred, it's going to be all over, and you can really, really guarantee that there's going to be some more splits yet if these guys from PowerNet and Placemakers keep doing what they're doing at the front because the elastic band trying to get onto the back of that echelon and trying to get some shelter only lasts for so long, and when it pings, you're out. And we can see further back the likes of the under-23 leader struggling to try and hold on to it here is the man in the yellow. He is not holding back. He is in the tour leader's jersey for a particular reason. He is the strongest, the fastest, on the front, driving it for his team. I would suggest Doug Dylan Kennett sitting further back in about fourth or fifth wheel is the man they're riding for here today. Yeah, he will be one of the guys that they've, they've uh, put a circle around on the uh, program before the start of the stage and try and uh, protect. And the sprint jersey there, you can see Tommy Sexton, and this is one of the Fruzio boys, uh, Roman uh, Reuben Thompson from Queenstown. They are just strung out, and it'll be a real ride from Tommy Sexton if he can get back onto the back of this group. As you've just alluded to, Julian, Michael Vink is by far the strongest rider here in this year's SBS Bank Tour, backing up from last year. This guy's a, a real season campaigner now, and he'll take a lot out of this, especially from his morale, but more from just an experience of how things can work for his team. He's done such a great job. Congratulations to them. Ollie Jones of the PowerNet team rolling through to the front, of course. Uh, he's sitting top three in the general classification. But we've also noticed that the colour has changed quite a bit here today. So don't adjust your screens. That is actually a direct result of the fires over in Australia here today. But these riders, they are dealing with all of the conditions as they make their way into Invercargill, up to Queen's Park, a finish that has been around for a significant amount of years in this SBS Bank Tour of Southland. It certainly has. It's a very historical finish, and it's, uh, it holds a lot of sentimentality for a lot of the bike riders and I'm sure the old bike riders watching this coverage will um, remember a lot of these corners coming onto the course there's normally 4 or 5 laps of the course too so once you get to Queen's Park you've still got another 15 or 20 k's to go 
toe, which can be morally uh, sapping as well when you can see, once again, the pace always around Queen's Park. The roads are a bit smoother too than what we've been used to riding, but it is always so fast. Interesting to note, in fourth wheel there is the Southland Hope, Corbin Strong. He's had an outstanding tour, this young man. Team Skoda, Fruzio, he's waiting patiently there, just cruising around to the Placemakers team, the Power Net team, looking for the stage victory. He's been very consistent all week long. Could today be his stage? Yeah, Corbin's had a fantastic race. He's a 19-year-old kid. He is a talent that we've not seen come out of Southland since probably the likes of Tom Scully, uh, who rode in the Tour de France this year. So Corbin Strong has got a big future. One of the other teams that's lining up there that looks quite sharp is the uh, West Coast North Island squad, uh, the Base Solutions racing team with uh, Campbell Stewart, and he'll be hoping to maybe set himself or Jordan Kirby up for the finish here too. So there's some real finishes in this group. It's going to be an exciting time to see who's going to cross that line in Gala Street. And speaking of which, Jordan Kirby heads off the front here, the Base Solutions racing West Coast North Island. This is the man, of course, who rode for Australia for a number of years in their team's pursuit squad. He is the former individual pursuit world champion in 2017. He is now riding for New Zealand here and he is making an effort off the front. Of course he's got his teammates, Campbell Stewart sitting back there. This is very good teamwork. Are they going to chase or they'll allow Campbell Stewart to sit up and ready for the sprint? Jordan Kirby is three laps to go. He's still away from this main field and all his pursuit skills and experience are going to have to come to the fore for him here. He's got a huge group of riders breathing down his neck, the front of which you can see is the yellow jersey chasing him down. But Jordan Kirby, he knows what to do when he's away on his own and it's going to be a fight all the way to the finish here. He's starting to struggle a bit, but around the corners he may go a wee bit quicker than the rest of the group. So he's looking quite sharp at this stage. Yes, they'll be very familiar with this, of course, because this was on day one, the team's uh, time trial around Queen's Park here. Everyone wants to win the last stage in a tour, particularly this Ascot Park Hotel stage from Winton to Invercargill. And we can see the man in the yellow jersey. He is driving it to try and get himself to Kirby, whose face is saying it all. He is absolutely putting everything into it. Meanwhile, you can see two of his teammates waiting patiently behind the man in the yellow to try and set themselves up for that sprint finish. And Campbell Stewart, he's got a fine sprint on him, Doug. He certainly has, and you've got to hand it to Michael Vink. He's the tour leader. He's the guy they normally protect. Here he is chasing down Jordan Kirby uh, to, in order to try and keep things together for his own man, the sprinter. And there's a couple of guys in his squad who could potentially win this. But it is Michael Vink, the tour leader, who has regained this group and has brought it all back together for the sprinters in his squad, one of which would be the uh, young boy Kennett. Uh, he is really really doing a fantastic job for his team and it shows you the strength and the uh, camaraderie these guys have had all week a great aerial shot coming down one of the main streets uh, here around queen's park and of course it is gala street itself and i just noticed there in that peloton is glenn hayden number 83 for the Cooplands bakery team one of the new teams on the block now glenn of course he's been battling out with paul odlin when it's come to the stonewood home silver jersey and there's no sign of the silver jersey here hayden had an outstanding time trial this morning there he goes in the middle of the group there number 83 second in the time trial this could be enough for him to move himself into that silver jersey. Yeah, a sterling ride. That silver jersey is one of the more hotly contested uh, sections in the SBS Bank Tour. And the uh, chaps always, always fight right to the finish. But Michael Vink, gosh, you've got to hand it to him. Here he is. He's leading out his teammates. He's leading out the whole field coming down Calvin Street. They're going to have one lap to go, get the bell. But Michael Vink is leading from the front. That yellow jersey is certainly on his shoulders um, by, no, by no chance. So just under four kilometres to go now as they make their way down Queen's Drive and we see the likes of Ollie Jones tucked in behind him for the Powernet team. We see some of the Kia Motors Ascot Park team lining themselves up there as well. Central Benchmakers, Will Bike also tucked in there in amongst it. Some of the Swiss riders from Bet for Farm as we see once again a Placemakers ride go, rider go here. This could be Ethan Bat by the looks of it, a former National Club Road Champion. He hits off. Now this will put the pressure on the group because they know the Placemakers 
placemakers, guys, the likes of Kennett, the likes of the tool leader, will sit back. They don't have to chase, obviously, it's their teammate. They're quite happy as long as there's somebody in the blue and yellow colours there of placemakers to win the stage. They've been by far the best drilled team here this year in the SBS Bank Tour, right through to this last stage. What a move. Tour leader on the front of the group. Ethan Bad attacks, sets up the rest of the team. Here's the Kia Motors guys. They are having to do the chase. Uh, there's going to be some serious hurt going on. Ethan Bat has strung this field out single-handed. Man, this guy is a powerhouse. They're putting all the pressure down Calvin Street here, the second to last street of this stage, the last stage of the 63rd edition of the SBS Bank Tour of Southland. And it is Kia Motors Ascot Park team as the placemaker riders. He pulls on up and allows now the main bunch to get set up. And it is the tour leader that's going to bring them into the corner. Yeah, Michael Vink is having a look under his shoulder just to see who is exactly on his wheel. He'll be hoping in there that uh, Dylan Kennett is not too far back. I could see there Corbin Strong also. Here is uh, Dylan Kennett starting to wind up for the finish with Corbin Strong on his wheel. Dylan Kennett leads them through with 300 metres to go and it's the man from South and Corbin Strong, Campbell Stewart on the outside but Dylan Kennett raises his arm in victory, two stages in a row on the final day of this SBS Bank Tour of South and, but there's the man in the yellow for placemakers, two years running, takes out this SBS Bank Tour of Southland, Michael Vink puts his name in the history books Michael Vink is one of the few riders to add his name to the history books to have multiple tour wins, winning in 2018 and defending the title here in 2019 by 238 over Heaney and Shrewers. Southlander Tom Sexton secures the Harcourt Sprint Ace with a massive 70 points over Ollie Jones. Powernet's Ollie Jones secures the Jesco Hydraulics King of the Mountains with 38 points over Fuller and Freyrie. The Dutch rider Van Noppen has managed to secure the Henderson Construction under 23 victory in the final stage of the tour. While Glenn Hayden puts himself at the top of the leaderboard in the Stonewood home silver jersey over Paul Odlin and Calder. Southland's Tom Sexton with his efforts off the front today secures the most competitive rider of the day. Powernet with an outstanding performance throughout the entire tour secures the Wednesday Cycles team classification by a massive 15 minutes and 30 seconds over Kia Motors Ascot Park Hotel. Pretty tired, but also pretty satisfied. It's been a massive week, not only for me but my whole team. But um, everyone has done done such a good job this week, and we've got a lot to uh, to be proud of and to celebrate tonight. I think the defining moment for me was probably the way the team rode to Gore. You know, even though I took the yellow jersey, it was totally a team effort. So the whole team was just absolutely incredible, and uh, to do it like that um, and to come back from a bit of a deficit was was pretty special. And I think it's a ride that'll be talked about for a long time to come. Follow the action from this historic race with live race updates, full results and pictures at www.tourofsouthland.com.